All right, y'all, this video is pretty much going to be for kids or uh, maybe people just getting into fishing. I'm going to kind of go over how I fished when I was a kid. I grew up here in eastern Oklahoma, had uh, grandparents that had farm ponds. I was within walking distance of all sorts of farm ponds, creeks, you know. I had a lot of fishing opportunities. And uh, growing up, it kept it pretty simple, hook and bobber. And... Uh, some really easy fishing lures for kids to use and just the kind of stuff you throw out reel in um, we never bought bait we had to find our own so we're going to look look for some bait a little bit and uh, kind of show you how to find some bait but um we're going to start off with just a simple hook and bobber rig i used to walk around with uh i would fish with one rod and reel that would have a hook and bobber rig up and whatever bait i could find on it and then I'd usually have another one with some type of fishing lure on it. And while I'm watching my bobber, I'm casting my lure, seeing what I can catch on either one. But uh, anyway, we're gonna start off with this hook and bobber rig. All right, we're gonna talk about line for just a second first. Now, I always use monofilament. I can't really tell you a lot about braid, but I like to use no less than six pound test, no more than maybe 10 uh, farm pond and creek fishing, stuff like that. It really depends on the size of lure or bait you're throwing. If you're throwing a, a small 16th ounce rooster tail, you, you're gonna want the six pound test line to get better cast distance. Now, you know, you do an eighth ounce, which is about as big as I would ever go. You, you can get away with the larger line, but just just keep in mind when you're picking out your lures or your line lighter line goes better with the lighter fishing lures pretty much but all right now we're going to look at bobbers because depending on what kind of bobber you're using depends on how you start off your rig now you've got these little plastic ones here you got the little wire clip there on them there's one on each end Now you can put this on at any time, really. You just clip it on your line. Like so, do the same with the other end. And there you have it. But now you've got these others. This here, it's a peg float, small peg float. And another thing I recommend is use the smallest float that you can get away with. Fish fell, The fish will feel uh, less resistance and they're more apt to hang on to that bait. But um, this one, it just slides on your line. And, um, and this one, you have to put these on before you put your hook and your weight on. But they just slide on your line like so. And put the peg back in it and there you have it now if you decide to take this off like sometimes I would do when I was a kid I would think oh, I want to throw my bait out on bottom well to get this off you have to take your hook and everything off and that's not really the best option if you might want to do that now another one a foam peg float here it's got the peg on it, in it, but it's also got this groove in it, so you can put it on or take it off of your line at any time. This is a really good option if it gives you more options. You can take this off of your line and fish on bottom without cutting everything off, but there's that. All right, let's get to uh, hooks and weights. All right, let's talk hooks. These are... A number six plain shank eagle claw hook you can get these pre-snailed where they already have a leader tied on them you can get them in different sizes uh, you can get the bait holder version that helps hold your worm or your bait whatever you've got on there on but uh this is a good size you can catch a uh, bigger bluegill and things like that on these and you can also catch some pretty good sized bass or catfish whatever's in the pond now you could go up to a number four and uh, you just have to think the, the bigger hook you get, the more smaller fish you're gonna eliminate. 
And uh, sometimes that might be all that's in that pond or that creek you're fishing in is them small fish. And that might be your only opportunity to have some fun. But you just kind of have to use your own judgment there. But I really like these. Number four is not too bad either. Probably don't want to get any bigger than, say, a one aught. But anyway, let's tie one of these on. All right. Really easy knot. I hope y'all can see this. Here's the hook. I'm going to run the line through the hook. I'm going to do a clinch knot. Run it through there, like so, and just start twisting. About seven, about seven or eight times. Now see the loop there by your eye? I'm gonna run this line through it. There you go, now wet it. Y'all excuse the phone ringing and then just pull it tight. There you go. Now, this knot could slip a little bit. We're gonna cut that tag end off, leave between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. About like so is good. All right. All right, let's go with weights. These are removable split shots. These are the BB size, which is really, in my opinion, all you need. I don't know if y'all can see this, but there it is. It's opened up. It's got the uh, little lips there on the back that you can uh, pinch with a pair of pliers to open or release it off of your line. They're removable. We're just gonna put this a couple inches above the hook, get your pair of pliers, crimp it down. Don't wanna do it too tight, you'll damage your line. Just, there we go. And that's it. And this bobber, you can adjust the depth on it. You just squeeze, squeeze the top a little bit, and slide it down to the depth you want. And there you have it. There's your rig, ready to go. Now, like I may have mentioned earlier, we didn't buy our bait, we had to go find it. So let's go find some bait. All right, we're gonna start off just flipping over some stuff. You can pick up rocks, logs. It's uh, kind of late springtime right now. Um, Worms, red worms, uh, grub worms, the little white fat ones, those are good bait. Um, you'll find crickets out out on the ground, uh, round stuff. I just walk through my yard sometimes and find them. Um, grasshoppers, if you can catch grasshoppers, that's really good uh, bait that you don't have to pay for. And if you can't find any bait, if you can sweet talk mom into giving you a strip of bacon, you can <laughs> you can cut that strip of bacon up into a whole bunch of little baits and that works really good but we're going to look underneath some of this stuff around here and see what we can find let's check out under this wood here i got piled up i don't know what that is <laughs> look there's no well, there's a piece of a worm oh looky there big old worm catfish bait Normally, I would just pinch a piece off about like that and use it. But now, you get one of these big ones like this, hook it through. Well, that one's broke. Maybe there's another one. Let's look here. There's a big one. Hook it through that little white ring there. That's its stomach, I believe. But it's pretty tough. Hook it through there one time, pitch that out there, and let that thing wiggle. Big old bass will tear it up. <laughs> Let's walk out here. I've uh, we we get we get our worms out here in these leaves and things all the time. You can come out here, rake around if you know a farmer or one of your grandparents or you live on a farm underneath the cow patties out in the pasture. That's a good spot to. 
go out there and flip over the dry ones you'll find worms that's usually where we would find grub worms when we was a kid but let's kick some of this around see what's under here there we go some more worms but yeah finding bait sometimes it can be tough but after you uh, get out and explore and search around a little bit, you kind of learn where to look. It's not too bad. It's not too hard to find. But, all right, let's go up here. I'll uh, show you some of my favorite little fishing lures. All right, now, now when uh, choosing your lure and your lure size, you got to remember what I mentioned earlier. Your line size has a lot to do with whether you're going to be able to cast that or not. So, if you're using anything over six pound test, I would go with the eighth ounce fishing lure or a little bigger. You can jump up to a quarter, but that eighth ounce, sixteenth ounce, in my opinion, is kind of the best all around to give you a opportunity to catch anything that's in the uh, pond or creek you're fishing. So this is, I believe, an eighth ounce. It might be three sixteenths. Rooster tail. I love these things. Here's, this is a 16th ounce, the ones I use the most. This one's kind of wore out. Little white 16th ounce. I really like this white. It's uh, really good in uh, dirty water or clear water. These are probably my favorite rooster tails, the 16th ounce white one. Underspins. This is a 16th ounce right here. Really good. This hook in here is a, a number four. I catch a big bluegill on it, a crappie. Caught a catfish on one of these the other day. But good little lure there. All these are really easy. You just throw them out and reel them in. Reel them in just fast enough to keep them off of the bottom. You don't want to reel too fast. Beetle spins. This one's a really small one. 30 second ounce, but like the others, I usually stick with the 16th ounce. These also come in a lot of different colors. There's a white one that I like. There's a green one and a yellow one. Those are both pretty good too. But uh, all right. Now these little guys, this looks like a little minna. These things are cheap and they'll catch about anything. A lot of treble hooks. You better have a pair of pliers in your pocket when you're using these. Here's another one. I think I gave a buck for these at Walmart maybe a dollar and a quarter this one here that looks like a crawdad it's really good there's another one looks like a grasshopper it's really good too now if you want to get you a nice bass these strike king minis these are really good i like these i believe these are eighth ounce yeah, eighth ounce. That's a good size in these. About eight pound test line. Tie you on one of these. Get you some nice pond bass. But, but all right, I tried to keep it simple. Um, didn't want to try to uh, throw in too much information in one little video. Like I said, this is for kids, for people just starting out. I've uh, had pretty good luck with everything I've shown you here. And uh, I'm sure I've missed something. Any of y'all guys that are experienced and watching want to throw something in the comments that I missed to, you know, add anything to help somebody out, maybe go ahead and throw it in there. If uh, y'all got any questions, just throw them down in the comments. But um, I hope this helps you out. I hope y'all enjoy this video. If so, hit that thumbs up button for me. Y'all want to see more, hit subscribe. Thank y'all.